You know, things happen here at the Pratt Lecture. That's the thing. This isn't just a lecture. This is a kind of um, a kind of gathering. This is uh, group therapy, where we hold hands and hug. Sometimes we laugh and cry, and often leave with a sense of shared purpose. I gave this lecture, as Barbara said, and Susan last year. Uh, before I go any further, though, I really think we should uh, give it up fully and robustly for Susan and that $150,000 match. Come on. That's, that's the real deal. As Barbara said, uh, since last year, really starting last year, we've been working together and we're getting extraordinary results. When I say extraordinary, uh, you know, mind you, I'm a data guy, I'm a reporter, and I can't go to the front page unless the data holds. And this data we're getting is extraordinary. Um, I hoped for this, but it's right in front of you, and I said, wow, it's really working. And these kids who have been addled with anxiety, and so much of what we're dealing with are anxiety-related disorders, let's be frank about it. It's sort of like the anchor way down deep in the lake, and there are many buoys on the surface, but anxiety drives so much, and the anxiety vanishes, just like it did for our son when we shared those videos that really, well, they defined him, which gets me up right to our hero here, Michelle Garcia Winner. Now, I first met Michelle, and now this is something that I think if we do a movie together, this will be in it. Uh, Cornelia and I were down at Disney World in Orlando. That's right. We were reporting for the book, Life Animated, which came out in 2014. And it just so happened while we were down there at Disney World, trying to figure out what was it about Disney World that made this place feel more like home for Owen than our house. It did. He was most at home in the Magic Kingdom, which was very confusing for us. What was it? What was it about memorizing 50 Disney movies? Yes, we got that. But walking through a brick-and-mortar version of it there in Orlando, somehow he had arrived at a place of context awareness and even depth, much more aware than we were. And he led the way for the first time. And just so happens, as we were doing this, Michelle Garcia Winner, and Pam Crook, or the doctor partner in all things for Michelle, were presenting at some hotel or other in Orlando. I mean, what dumb luck. So after a day at the Magic Kingdom, we went and met Michelle Garcia Winter. And of course, it was transformative. Michelle's extraordinary on a stage, which is a gift when you're, well, I, mean, I think Michelle has more dates on the road than Jay Leno ever had. I mean, this woman is amazing. She goes all over the world, speaks to crowded auditoriums, brings them real wisdom. Social thinking that she started back in 1990, at least coined the term, was something that has really transformed the landscape. Now, Michelle is a highly credentialed speech language pathologist. She, she's got research and she's got golden degrees. But what she did was go beyond any of those areas of credential to create a way to be in the world for people who are neurodiverse or just nerds like this place is lousy with and Caltech and Stanford. It seems like half the world these days. I mean, that Mensa organization ought to give you a direct award at this point. Because <laughs> it is just pain to walk through the world as someone who is socially obtuse. We are social animals, we human beings. And when you do not fit socially, and when you miss the cue, and when you haven't had a date since, well, you can remember, and you always seem to say the wrong things at always the wrong times. Well, it is so very hard. And we saw that with our son. We couldn't beg, borrow, or steal him a friend but I see it so many places. 
and Michelle's extraordinary empathy for what it feels like to be in the skin of someone who lives like that. And while it's a feat of humanism to say, I get it, and I'm going to give you rules to live by, and I'm going to help you not miss that signal that's just coming right now so you don't mess up, so you get what you want, so you get to where you want to be. Rules to live by. Social thinking. There are now one million adherents signed and delivered who've come to these ballrooms to drink deep of the wisdom of Michelle Garcia with a million people. Do you know how many people those million have touched? Most of them are therapists. They're speech language professionals. They're therapists, psychologists. They do all kinds of help. But they're guided by what this woman and, and Pam have created. And Michelle is in the movie Life Animated. You can see it. It's on Amazon and iTunes. And she has some of the key parts in the movie about our life. One point, Owen, giving too much away, if you've seen the movie, breaks up with his girlfriend, and he's just shattered. And Michelle and Cornelia are together in his condo and in Hyannis. And Owen's a mess. And what he needs right then is someone to tell him the truth. This happens. He says, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be single. I don't want her to forget about me. <laughs> He's autistic. He can only tell the truth. And Michelle says, well, this sometimes happens. And Emily, your girlfriend, seems to be doing fine. Something Cornelia and I would never say. It was the truth. <laughs> that one zinging burst of truth. Well, it helped them a lot. Yeah, she is doing fine. And Michelle said, you know all I'm worried about, Owen? You're worried about me. <laughs> right. And how are you going to get forward to the sunlight? It's right there in the movie. You see Michelle working her magic. So it is with <laughs> enthusiasm and joy that I get the privilege of introducing my dear friend, my co-conspirator, in a way, all of our co-conspirator, in goodness. In the Talmud it says, save one life, save the world entire. Now multiply by a million. We all do that. I promised Owen, he knew I was seeing Michelle tonight. Um, and I've got to actually run out of here to catch a flight. So I'm not going to be able to listen to Michelle's wisdom, though I've heard some of it before. He says, oh, you see Michelle? I said, that's right. Well, you should tell her that, well, what I think of her. I said, okay. And it's the sidekicks here. Oh, yeah, they, they tell her that. So I'll just finish with words from Owen about Michelle. Now, Owen believes that the choice of the hero in every narrative we know is arbitrary. Who chooses that hero? And everyone else lines up as psychics. I don't buy it. And his philosophy is different. He thinks the sidekick is the most important character. They help the hero fulfill their destiny. Without them, nothing happens. Hmm. And so, he says, Michelle is a special sidekick. Now, this is something that Owen, in fact, said to no one less in May than the Pope. <laughs> We're in Rome, I know. I'm not making this up. <laughs> A couple Jewish guys at the Vatican with the Pope. <laughs> so Owen said, tell Michelle and everybody that what I told the Pope is the same for Michelle. And what Owen told the Pope yeah, right. He walked up, and there they were together. Now, Owen looks at the Pope the way people rarely look at the Pope, just like another guy. 
he knows he's a pope, <laughs> and he's wearing a terrific white yarmulke, Owen pointed out. And, uh, <laughs> and we were there, and of course, I'm a mess. Now, I've met presidents and interviewed them, but the pope, I don't know, something happened to me. I was a jumble. And then he turns to Owen, and Owen goes, <clears throat> The sidekick helps the hero fulfill their destiny. It's the most important role. And the pub goes, huh, yeah. <laughs> and then he says, and you're the great sidekick because uh, you help the world fulfill its destiny. And thank you on behalf of autistic people everywhere. And the pub starts to cry. <laughs> and then he blesses Owen. And he says, well, that's Michelle. She's the big sidekick, like the Pope. I think like many folks in this room, helping others fulfill their destiny as us discovering our inner hero, our best self. So let me introduce the big sidekick, Michelle Garcia.